Thank you for joining me. I'm so excited to get to talk to John and Michelle today. I got the honor of meeting them at a couples retreat that I do, a couples communication workshop that I do called Breakthrough. And I just was so inspired by their story and who they are as a couple. I'm excited to have this conversation with them. And I think there's a lot that you will enjoy in it. So John and Michelle, thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Well, can you help the listeners um, get started just by giving us some context? How long have you guys been together? What does life look like? How many kids do you have? What does life look like on a day-to-day -day basis in your married world? You go. Yeah. <laughs> well, we've been married 17 years, just had our 17th wedding anniversary in July, a few days before breakthrough, actually. Um, we have three children, a 15-year-old boy who's a sophomore, a freshman girl who's 14, and then a nine-year-old going in the fourth grade. So I'd say we have a very full life. We are often going separate ways. Like you take this one, I'll take this one, and we'll come back and we'll, you know, like I think probably a lot can relate to this yeah. <laughs> season of life. Yeah. Um, but we've we've pretty much our wheels are always spinning and going, and we have to be super intentional about anything in relation to us. Yeah. Yeah, it's very yeah. Very easy to get off track and not invest in us because our kids don't go to our local public school. So she drives them 20 minutes every day. And then there's, they're all in sports and activities. And I try to help when I can. I travel a lot for work. So I'm on the road quite a bit. So yes, it's a very full life. And, uh, but that's why we're here being committed to this process. Yeah. I resonate a lot. John, when you say that we have to be really intentional to mm -hmm. uh, connect as a couple, how do you know you're not being intentional? Like, what are the signs? How do you start to notice, oh, we have, or are you, are you just always yeah. intentional with each other? <laughs> oh, gosh. No, 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 no. No, you can tell there are symptoms get irritated with one another a little bit easier than you probably would if you were fully connected, um, irritated, like angry, like frustrated with that person. When, when you're connected, they could leave laundry all over the floor and you'd be like, Oh, look at that. <laughs> but when, when it's, Are you saying I leave laundry? <laughs> nope, not saying that, <laughs> but if it's reversed and we're not spending time together, you know, it goes both ways. Like mm -hmm. I could say something that wasn't intended the way he's taking it. Um, and he could take it that way because we're not connected and mm -hmm. it can happen in the blink of an eye. Yeah. It can happen yeah. really quickly. Yeah. I, it's, it's the word intention means a lot to me because I try to live that out, but I will tell you, I'm very good at being intentional for myself. I think I struggle to be, to make sure I'm intentional for her and our family. So as, as a guy, and I, again, I travel and, and really kind of this breadwinner mentality, it's like a pride thing for a guy too, which is not a good thing, but it's just this idea of like, no, I'm out hunting. I'm like, you know, I'm going to go get the food and come back. Um, <laughs> and so it's very easy to get, it's honestly, I'm in sales too. So like, you're kind of, you're kind of taught to be selfish in a lot of ways. And then it's, it, it again, it is and, and somewhat of a pride thing. So, um, I'm, I find myself a lot like, Hey dummy, there you are again. And whether I'm on my phone or, you know, Oh, I got, but I got this important customer or one of my sales reps or whatever reaching out to me. It's very easy to prioritize that over being present with her or, or with the kids and, and I think, I, you know, I'm trying for sure to do better there, but there's always room to improve. Well, and it's really easy to make excuses. Like what I realized at Breakthrough is when you, you had a target. And I don't want to give everything from Breakthrough away, but that really like resonated with me about where, like, what's your vision? And are you aiming toward that vision? Mm -hmm. And you specifically said like, where would you be on this target? And before you even said it, I was thinking, oh my goodness, I'm that I'm saying I want this. I'm saying I want more time. I'm saying 
we need to be more connected. But then when we have opportunity, I'm like running away. I'm like going the opposite mm -hmm. direction. And I think that's what's been so great about this. That is a, I would say a big surprise to both of us probably is like, while it's about our marriage, it's also digging back layers that I thought we might have as a couple and not to sound <laughs> completely pompous, but I really didn't feel like I had a lot to work on. <laughs> I felt like he had a lot to work on. <laughs> and once you got it right, things would be real smooth. Um, but True. I, I did have to work on Well, but I'm saying my point is, I'm learning that I have a whole a whole lot to work on. Mm -hmm. And that's hard for me to say, and he'll say it. It's hard for me to say. <laughs> Yeah. Well, by nature, we don't realize how much easier it is to see what other people's weak spots are or their, um, you know, areas of, that need growth. We don't realize how easy it is to see it in others, but how challenging it is to see it in ourselves. And so it just is an automatic assumption we tend to think because we don't naturally see our own growth needs. We think the other person has far more growth needed than we do. Because, but it's just because we're seeing it every day in them because we just see it easier over there than on in our own uh, world. So um, let's just talk about what does intention look like in you guys' relationship? What does that look like on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, on an annual basis? What does that look like? Julia, can you repeat the question? We just, it was a little unstable there for a second. So I'm not sure we caught the first part. Do you mind repeating yeah. the question? Yeah, if you can just share what does intention look like for you guys on a daily basis? Is it a weekly basis, an annual basis? Well, as of late, we've tried to make time to have coffee together or go on a walk or go play tennis. And this is so sad to say, but sometimes we didn't do that. Like, it was... What were we celebrating? What was the day we were, maybe our anniversary? Was, <laughs> I can't remember. But we sat down together for like a half an hour at the kitchen table and just yeah. talked. It wasn't about, it wasn't about like work. It wasn't about kids. It wasn't about anything other than we were just like having fun together. And that makes a huge, mm -hmm. that I was like, I'd rather have that than, you know, a summer in Bora Bora, let's say. Well, it's <laughs> like a, that it's, to me was so important. It's a great point because it was, I didn't plan anything. And in the past, it's been a big issue if I didn't really go out of the way to plan something. I felt like pretty big, whether it's a dinner or you have a bunch of gifts or whatever else. So I think we literally each got each other a card. I don't even know if I gave her the no. card that day. And I'll, and I say that it's a little embarrassing, but, <laughs> My card either. but I also didn't need to because I showed up and actually, and she's been asking for years, Hey, when I cook dinner, will you just come and talk to me? Yeah. And I've honestly haven't been intentional about that. I'm just, Oh, well, I got something else going on. And why would I just come talk to you when you're having dinner? Like I'm going to go do something else. So, and it's funny too, because we have ideas of what the other person wants. Like yeah. I really, I mean, of course, who doesn't like a gift, but I could do without gifts. I could do without mm -hmm. those things. Like I just, I mean, you know, like the love languages, like I like quality time. Like just mm -hmm. sit and talk to me for 20 minutes and I will never be mad at you. <laughs> <laughs> well, or it's, a, it's an important thing after coming, going to breakthrough and spending time uh, on the, the picnic blanket and having some breakthroughs and just being together, being present. I think we have, not that it's been perfect, but instead of, I think when we, even when we first went there, we were talking about, well, we got to schedule date night and we got to schedule weekends away every quarter. Like and that it's was like, our solution. here's our plan. <laughs> and it's like, that's all bullshit. It's all like, no, no, no. In the moments, can we connect in the moments, the day-to-day -day moments? And yes. we, we're at, actually going through something now where we had a, a conflict this weekend. And honestly, that's, and I'll take ownership of it. I haven't invested in, in the last week, let's call it in those day-to-day -day moments for whatever reason. Life's busy, but that's on me now to try and be well, it's better on, at it's that. It's on both of us, right? She, she's taking ownership. <laughs> See, we're both breaking through. <laughs> but seriously, like I, that's 
And and guess what? When the shit hit the fan a little bit and the, over the weekend, because I wasn't building into her. It's right? easy then to just get when the friction comes. Yeah. Sorry that I'm swearing a little bit too. I'm I know. Sorry. I'm sorry. You're good. Um, Feeling very passionate about this yeah. or something. <laughs> yeah. I all I often describe it like the disc in our vertebrae. You know, when we have intentional time together, it's like the disc in the vertebrae. We can bend easily and, you know, yeah. uh, j- get jerked around a little bit. And it's no that not that big a deal. But when those discs are deflated, every movement is like excruciating. Yeah. Every little bump, every little thing creates this intense tension that mm-hmm. is really powerful. And yet, you know, one of the things we look a lot at breakthrough is that what we have is what we want. And we, like you were saying, Michelle, we, I, I don't know, maybe it was you, John, that said this a second ago that you, we make this list of all these things. Well, we'll just start doing this and going here for date night. And mm-hmm. when we don't do it. It's not because we didn't have the list or the ideas. It was because the best choice we saw available was to not connect. There's too much built up between us that we know in order to connect, we're going to need to face those things we don't want to face have those conversations we don't want to have. And so we just keep making excuses that time is why we don't connect or work is just busy or all these excuses we come up with to avoid avoid the intention because intention calls us to honesty and the reality of where we're at as a couple. So yes, I, I think that will, I think a lot of couples can resonate with that. So as you guys think about your busy lives, here you are, busy, three kids, sports, going all these different directions. Uh, You guys were invited to the summer event, which is a super busy time for families. So what brought you to decide to take three, it's a two and a half day event, but you guys needed to travel. And what brought you to decide that you wanted to come and take three days away and be intentional in your marriage? That's a great question because we didn't really think typically we'll have a lot of time to think about what we're going to (laughs) do because we were gone a lot this summer with our family and we'd been gone for like almost three weeks in a row. When we came back, we had a few days at home and then it was like, okay, we're going again. And honestly, I was like, are you as exhausted as I am? He's like, we are doing this. But initially when we first signed up. It was through a friend that told us about it, who immediately texted John, it was my one of my girlfriend's husbands that were also at Breakthrough, and they'd shared it with us before. And I, you know, thought about it. But then he reached out to John while, while we're sitting right there, our daughters are friends. And John wrote back with a green check mark, done. And, and I was like, done, like, no, done let's look into it but no it was done he'd already booked it like in two minutes time yeah Yeah. and so I think he knew like let's let's invest in this area we both know that we've needed to do something like this other than we go you know we take a couple trips away he and I every year Mm -hmm. and and it's great and you know love the beach love having a little time away, but sometimes you don't have those conversations that you need to be having. Well, not sometimes. We probably never did, Mm -hmm. right? The deep conversations. The deep conversations. Here's the other thing. So Jim and Laura Hicks, Julia, you know, that I think went maybe last year to Breakthrough and you've done Mm -hmm. coaching with them. They're fairly new friends, at least for me, the last couple of years. And I've noticed they're something about them that's different as they connect as a couple that I admired and some of the language I'd noticed they, they used. And when they reached out, I was on the road traveling and Jim texted me and Michelle had said, Hey, Jim's going to text you. And I am kind of an overthinker sometimes when I invest in like buying a car or whatever else, but, <laughs> but I, they modeled the behavior. So there was that one. And then I'm like, what better way to invest in us than, than to do this and spend a weekend away. At the very least, we, we would be spending a weekend away. And I was way better than that. I mean, we definitely have we, we really didn't even know what to expect. Yeah. We, we didn't know who you were, Julia. Like, we had no idea. <laughs> Jim sent the text. I went to the website. 
paid the money, done. And then like, I think a week or two before we started to do some Where's research like before, we're like, we're just showing up. And frankly, <laughs> we just got back from a, a family trip and we went to a family camp in Michigan and we were exhausted. <laughs> and like three, four days before, we're like, should we cancel? Like, and then we both were like, no, this is, we're committed. Let's, this is an investment in us. We have to do it. And it was about a six hour drive for us, which was awesome too. But it's, it was amazing. Like, we're I so. I think sometimes when there's going to be a breakthrough, something big is going to happen. It's really easy to avoid it. I mean, mm -hmm. totally authentic and being raw with you. Like today, because of the tension we've had even over the weekend, I was like, we shouldn't do this. We, <laughs> we're not ready. And he's like, um, are you trying to sabotage and avoid this? <laughs> you know, and even when we do bring up those terms, it's like, and you may not be receptive to it in the moment, you think about it, you know? And it was like, wow, why am I like wanting to like not do that? I mean, I feel like even just this time right here is healing yeah. because it, it's like a hard thing that we, we deal with mm -hmm. um, consistently with a family member and it can raise tensions high. Um, but I will say going to breakthrough has given us lifelong tools that we'll be able to use now and long into our marriage that, you know, I mentioned this a little bit at breakthrough, but we had a lot of things we needed to deal with that we were not dealing with, which is one of the reasons why I would avoid being together because I still had like some different things that I was dealing with in the inside and I didn't want to deal with it. And it can rear its head sometimes, but having tools is beneficial. Like I think we probably wouldn't have survived it. We would have, both been kind of quiet about it. And it just would have, we would have just drifted, drifted, drifted. Mm -hmm. When the kids are gone, I don't know, but I feel like we've got some valuable, valuable tools that we can use together. Um, and then, yeah. and then individually, you mm -hmm. know, so many things individually that we can use. I, I would say most people from the outside and anybody that watches this might even say like, wait, what do you mean they have problems? Because, or anything that they're dealing with, you know what I mean? I don't know that we give that vibe. <laughs> I mean, I want to be raw and real with people. Um, mm -hmm. But sometimes when it comes to your marriage and stuff, you don't really share all the things. You mm -hmm. just don't. But it's real. People are having their own private battles. Life is challenging. It's the beauty of the challenge that grows us, but we act like the challenges that we face are we're not supposed to be having. And yet it's the beauty of being alive. It's the beauty of how we grow. And so, uh, Michelle, you mentioned that you had some things inside of you that you needed to address. Would you be willing to add context? Like what are the things that you saw in yourself that you knew needed to be addressed? You just didn't know how to address them. That, that's a good question. And um, it's probably multi-layered. And we had gone through some really trying times in our marriage um, that I had, that had created a lot of pain and hurt and wounds that felt unrepairable. And we tried to fix it for a little bit, like going to therapy and and when I when I actually even right now I'm thinking back to that and realizing how when we were trying to repair things so we could move on, I I avoided. And every therapist we went to, I'm like, nope, I I don't want to be with them. I don't want to be with them. I don't like this person. And so I just then I didn't have to deal with it. Mm -hmm. And so what I did by that is just, I kept sh shoving it down and I never actually would 
ever have considered myself an avoider until like right now, <laughs> right in this very moment of speaking about it. Um, because I kind of do see a pattern with myself that I will avoid to not have to deal with feelings. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was creating a lot of internal issues and friction. So it was easy to be annoyed and irritable and then thus never connecting mm -hmm. because it needed to be, it needed to be dealt with. They were just an intense hurts that, also let me feel like a victim. Mm -hmm. And I know I brought this up at Breakthrough too. Um, and I never would have considered myself a victim. I, I think I did say like at the beginning, you'd brought it up a little bit and I kept thinking, oh, there must be a lot of victims in this room. <laughs> and then at the end of on Sunday, realizing, wow, I've done that. I've I've been like, well, I can feel this way because you know, this is my story or this happened to me. And, um, and that did like zero for us or me. Yeah. Um, but it's also, look, I, it, it's easy to become a victim when you've been hurt too. Right. right. So, I mean, look, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I was unfaithful mm -hmm. and that's even hard to verbalize. And I, it's terrible. It's a terrible thing. Now, I've personally done a lot of work to transform and, and get better, and we've done a lot of work, but there's still work to be done. There still hurts there, and that came out in Breakthrough, that there's still scar tissue. And maybe that scar tissue is all, always there in some ways, but how do we grow from that? So I, it hurts me that she thinks she's a victim, but also that's a blessing, too, that that victim mindset is holding her back, right? There's mm -hmm. probably value in that, but also like, I need to move forward from that, which I think that was, look, we came to break through and didn't really have a specific thing we wanted to work on. We were like, hey, we're just need to connect and communicate better. And like night one, we were like, okay, yeah, this is good. And we're gonna <laughs> have date nights and all this. Then day two, we're like, well, what? We have the situation with our son that's very, it's ch very challenging. It causes a lot of conflicts. We struggle with that. And then all of a sudden day three hit and we, she had the epiphany that stood up and was like, oh my gosh, I have this victim mindset and I'm sabotaging. I'm, I don't think you said avoiding at the time. So there's awareness for you right now, but sabotaging. And then by her getting the breakthrough, then like later that day, I got a personal breakthrough that I was like, oh my gosh, I'm not showing up to serve her and our family because I had wounds in my past that I'm like some worthiness stuff and not loving myself that that hurts me to, you know, stops me from loving her, how she needs to be loved. So, you know, I, I can, and I've done a lot of personal development stuff too. I did not expect to go that deep. So kudos to you, Julia. And this like for everybody watching or listening like that. Yeah. Who did not want to show emotion and early on in our relationship, I'd be like, get mad, cry something. Cause like, I, I kind of wear my feelings on my sleeves. You know, like if I'm feeling a lot of something, then I might cry. <laughs> I could be sad or happy. It doesn't matter. And if I'm mad, then you'll also know that too. <laughs> but he will just like contain, he's like a container and you don't really see a lot of emotions. And then he, I mean, there was, there was so much like peeling back of layers that him just even like showing emotion in that way, like crying and bearing his heart and being so authentic I'm like wow I mean that's also what I've always wanted mm -hmm. you know so that was a gift to be able to see him be able to I mean surprisingly reveal that part which I it was a surprise to him too but it wouldn't have happened if she didn't peel back right and that's the gift of what you provided the whole entire room and like think about how many people had those emotional breakthroughs and it's like we we have so much crap that we suppress as human beings, right? And I think of it like taking out the trash. If we don't take out the trash consistently, it gets stinky and smelly and, and we've got to do it. And so that is a huge breakthrough for, for her, then me, and then us. And here's what's cool too. We had this conversation this morning. And I'll tell you, like things have been a little tense for us the last couple of days. And my my 
typical thing is I grew up in a very conflict driven home. So we've talked a little bit about it. So I want to like avoid conflict at all costs. So like almost I, I tend to pull away and then I'll explode. If like things get too, too tense, then I'll, you know, I feel like it doesn't happen a lot, but it happens. And so I felt like we sat down and talked and maybe didn't get a breakthrough in our conversation, but today yes but we, we talked we talked which was just a breakthrough and, there, and i think we did a good job of asking questions first mm -hmm. it started out with a lot of statements and then it turned into more of questions and i even caught myself because there was a point i wanted to make like a pretty definitive statement and i'm like press pause okay how do i pose this as a question and keep it in my own backyard and i'm not this is not tooting my own horn it's just the process is messy because my default wanted to be like and I straight kinda, back. I kind of went to my default, but you did ask more questions. But you, it's a you, work and it's not perfect by any stretch, but the seeds have been planted now where it's like show up. And then I felt like I was sabotaging a little bit questioning <laughs> if we should even come on this call. And <laughs> I'm like, look, the growth is in the messiness. So to yeah. your point, you said like we're in the process right now. So we let's just show up. And and, and again, not it's not tooting my horn. It's just knowing like this is part of it. So like, yes, even right now we're like, I almost feel like a connection to her right now where we've kind of been disconnected for a bit just by us talking through it and that awareness piece. Yes. What you don't know, you don't know, which I've been stealing and using, by the way. <laughs> this is all, <laughs> we use all of your verbiage these days. <laughs> Well, there's so much in what you guys have shared, and I want to break it down for those watching to understand more because um, there's just a lot in what you shared. And so one, to start, Michelle, with the victim mindset. So we don't see it in ourselves, but it is default in our human DNA. The moment something isn't going the way we want it to go or think it should go, we look for someone or something to blame. This is just the default nature of our humanness. We don't realize that's the victim within us that wants to blame someone else. Because as long as I can blame you, I'm mad because of what you did. I no longer need to take responsibility for my anger and your actions are the problem. And that's just by nature what we do because that's the easiest, most comfortable route to take. If I have no control over what I'm feeling and I'm feeling this because of you, then you must be the problem. But when we do that, we give all of our power away. Now I'm gonna be angry uncontrollably until you change your behavior, but I have no power to change your behavior. So then we just keep perpetuating our anger and our frustration towards each other. So Michelle, it was powerful to watch you go through the weekend and watch you get a hold of being able to see that mindset, that human mindset in you. It's not a problem with you. It's in every single one of us. You just were willing to see it in a way that often takes people a long time to see it that much in themselves. Um, but that is powerful when you can see it because no matter what's happening, there, we're either in a victim mindset, which is default, or we're in a responsibility mindset. In a responsibility mindset, I'm willing to take 100% responsibility for what I've contributed to how things are turning out. Even if my contribution is only 5%, I'll take 100% responsibility for my contribution. Now I have power. Even if it was just a small part that I played, if I will shift that way of being, do something different, the circumstances will no longer be the same. They will be different. So it's very empowering and life-giving when we choose to take responsibility for our contributions to how things are turning out. So um, that was something that I think is, is really powerful. I think one of the things I want to invite you guys to share is you've talked a lot about, you know, the layers coming off and we went so deep and all of these kind of things. Often when people think about coming to breakthrough, they think, oh my goodness, I'm going to need to share my dirty laundry in front of everyone. And it's going to be all this crying and I'm going to need to talk about things I don't want to talk about. Did you guys have any of those um, concerns coming in? And yeah, let's just start there. Did you have any of those concerns or fears coming in? 
Well, I remember on, was it Friday night or Saturday? He looked like he wanted to stand up. And, and I kind of gave him the death stare, like, don't you stand up. <laughs> <laughs> because, because I I didn't want to share a lot. I didn't, you know, I, I like being vulnerable when it's with an individual or two. But when it's in a room full of people, I'm like, this is private. And we'll listen to these communication labs because it's amazing and I'm learning so much but I don't think you really need to stand up. <laughs> and also I was like waiting. We're like, you know what? Maybe our aha is that we're just, we know that or our breakthrough is going to, we know we need to spend more time together. And we were like totally fine with thinking that until we had our real breakthrough on Sunday. But um, yeah, I, I mean, I was totally nervous about that. But then after on Sunday, when it all just like, made sense at the same time. It was like a series of things that you just discussed with us. And it was like, oh my goodness. And then I, I wanted to share. Mm -hmm. And I even was trying to think about, okay, what am I gonna share? But I thought, I just have to stand up. I just have to actually take my body and stand up or put my hand up. And I remember I put my hand up and then you called on someone else and I was like, Phew, I should not be speaking. That was a sign. I, and I bet she didn't see that. <laughs> and then you did actually see that. And then I did stand up and it just flowed out of your heart because we were so deep in that moment and that, that new concept of me being a victim and not aiming in the direction I actually wanted to go. And kind of sabotaging things really was just so real. And I, I didn't even think when I actually got up to speak, I wasn't trying to organize my thoughts. It yeah. just kind of came out. I actually, yeah. someone else said to me, I, I wanted to stand up, but I, I wasn't sure I would actually say what I wanted to say. And I'm like, I actually raised my hand and had no clue what I was going to say. <laughs> Yeah. I think it just comes out of abundance of what you're learning. Yeah, it's the beauty so, of the human spirit. When yeah. something's happening inside of you, it's it's powerful, the impact that our words, somehow we say things we didn't even know we knew how to say. Well, I'll, yeah. I'll say this too. I think it's the power of the immersion. So going there on a Friday, driving together, first session Friday night, then set, doing some homework sat, all, all day Saturday, Saturday night. We had a great session Sunday morning communicating. And then that's like during the Sunday session when you got up. That happens on, it didn't happen on day one or day two. It took that immersion and that process of learning and applying and getting curious and all that about each other and ourselves and then learning from others. That was the other awesome part. Like such inspiration here and other couples get up and talk and you coaching them, right? So And I think it could be different for every couple yeah. because even like some of our friends, you have small groups and we made friends with everyone in our group. And one of the gals, like we created a text chain and she was like, had this breakthrough on the drive home. Mm. And and that's what's cool about it. It's it's a weekend, but your breakthrough can happen a week after you get home. Like I, I, we're still having breakthroughs because we're in real life and, and it's still a direct cause of our weekend that our breakthroughs are coming to be. Yeah. Well, that's the whole, so it goal. Doesn't, you're not just paying for the weekend. You're not just going for the weekend. Yes. I don't know. The whole goal for me, I had been to many marriage retreats and I knew that I'm a hands-on learner. And I have been to marriage retreats where you hear the speakers tell you all these amazing tools and how it, much it's impacting their life. And you're like, oh, that sounds amazing. Now I have these tools. I can go home and do this. And then you have your first argument or conflict after the, after the event. And you're like, these tools don't work at all. This is terrible. <laughs> you know, we just must not be as great as those people that, that know how to use them. <laughs> 
And so that's what I did not want. I wanted couples to actually apply them and have, I believe tension is how we grow. And when we can break through the tension, it produces growth, just like a rosebud breaks out of its, um, you know, bud or a butterfly breaks out of a cocoon. That's the life. That's the growth. That's what we're designed to do every time tension shows up in our conversations and in our lives. So the goal is to give you tools that you're using hands on in the event, getting a, at least one breakthrough while you're there. So, you know, it works for you. And then you go home and you just keep breaking through tension at moment after moment. And sometimes you get stuck. No problem. How do you break through where you're stuck? And it's really a process as you break through tension, you just keep elevating your, your relationship with yourself and your relationship with each other. And the marriage just keeps getting better because that's what tension wants to do is produce growth. So a big part of the event, which is, guys, sorry, go ahead. Oh, so no, I was just going to say, which is something I've never thought about before that growth happens in tension. Yeah. And even just this weekend, I found myself wanting just to go the opposite direction of the tension. And then, I mean, honestly, I think if it weren't for breakthrough and our time with you, Julia, I would probably spend a good three more days ignoring him. <laughs> that's the truth. <laughs> Cause that's yeah. sometimes how I would be like avoid. Yeah. So, that's my thank nature. you. When tension comes up, we want to avoid it, but that just makes it more intense and more angry and frustrating and bitterness and all of those things begin to grow. So John, you had mentioned earlier picnic on our picnic blanket. So explain a little bit about, you were talking about the sessions. You had a really good session with Michelle. What do you mean by picnic blanket and sessions? Can you help people understand more about yeah, how yeah. the weekend is set up? Yeah, so when you come, you get this really cool picnic blanket that's like kind of folds up. It took us a while to figure out how to <laughs> fold it up. Um, but it's awesome. So you would go out in the, in the beautiful setting on the farm and find a spot and lay the picnic blanket out. And we had, you gave us questions to guide us. And then we would have basically just communicate for an hour or so. And so. Um, but the questions were deep questions that mm -hmm. we wouldn't have just gotten to the heart yeah. of if we had like 20 minutes with just you yeah. and I. And you trained us on how to generous listening and how to, you know, how to come at stuff with a growth mindset or along the way. And then we would go and actually apply them. That's what I thought the beautiful thing was, is you're learning. You can go learn anybody in a workshop or a keynote, but to actually be able to apply it on the spot. So the blanket was a conduit to that, right? And so we actually now have a coffee and like talking sitting room in our house. We came home and got oh, rid God, of our, she got rid of our dining room table. <laughs> we weren't really using it the and some holidays but anyway we have like four chairs now and that's become now like our little like connection room i would say love um, it but the, yeah i mean the that the blanket doesn't matter what it's just the conduit to have that connection and that time which is yeah super important yes yeah, so you come into breakthrough with a specific conversation you want to break through and then you're given a new tool one at a time and then you go into your picnic time, your couple's connection, to apply that tool to break through this conversation you came here to break through. So um, did you guys, I know, John, you mentioned you didn't have a specific conversation. You just knew you wanted to create more connection with each other. But would you say yeah. that you felt you broke through the conversation you came there to break through? Well, and I'll restate that. We we weren't exactly sure on the connection, yes, but it's probably around parenting. We have a lot of conflict with parenting, how just with our son and there's been challenges and we don't always agree and, and see eye to eye on it. So that became, while we were there, that's what, all right, let's use that as our tool as we talk. But what the beautiful part is when she had her breakthrough and then I had mine, it got a lot deeper than that. So it did not become about our son. It became about how I can show up and serve her and be there for her so she can be in the moment and and when I'm traveling and we're having challenges, right? If I'm building into her and we're connected, kind of what you said about 
what the spine or whatever, whatever like that. Maybe that was before we were even talking here, but this, when you, when you're connected, the, the friction then becomes not as, I feel like that's probably, we got, we got a couple layers beneath and I've even for myself got layers beneath. I'm like, Oh my gosh, we all have stuff to work on, but you know, there's an awareness there. That's like, we came with this one. Yes. We tackled that the conflict with our son, but I think the layers are actually the foundation. If we can both build into that and, and get better and continue to seek that awareness and get better, then that's going to help us be better parents too. It's just like all at all is part of the process. And the other, well, yeah. we were trying to come up with a conversation because again, for so long, we've not been dealing with real things and we the topic we picked, I believe, was a symptom of a, a deeper, yes, a deeper right. issue, yeah. the root of the issue. And so, I mean, but you have to have a starting place. So we started there yeah. and then eventually we're like, wait a minute, this is not, this is not our conversation. We need to get to the root of this. And it, we had to like backpedal a lot, which is painful. Um, but we we did that and you know i don't i don't think that will be over like we'll continue to have to keep going there but i mean that's how we found what our con conversation was but the, and the other important piece is like looking in your own backyard ultimately because it's so easy to look in and for me to look in her backyard and point out all the weeds and say this is your fault here's what you're doing wrong versus looking at what am I bringing to the table? Like I never, I'm a visual guy. So that visualization for me was really powerful. And that's what the power too. like, we had this conversation that we wanted to work on, but then it became, at first it was, all right, here's what you need to work on. Right. And you're probably saying, well, here's what you need to do. And then it became, oh my gosh, here's what I need to work on in my own backyard for that conversation. And then it's like, to your point on the roots, then you're like, holy cow, there's a lot of roots here. So the work never stops, really, in all honesty, right? This is the beauty <laughs> of it. So you can look at that as a good thing or bad thing. I think it's a beautiful thing. Yes. So, I don't, yeah, it took me experience. quite a few years to realize that marriage is really the most beautiful arena for growth. When I signed up mm -hmm. for marriage, I was signing up for my own personal growth. And I didn't realize that. I thought I was signing up to get loved on. <laughs> but in order, to get, in order to get love, it means I need to grow my ability to give and receive love. So, um, yeah, I want to add context to the backyard so that people understand my um, I'm a visual learner. So everything's visual to me. And I began to realize that couples were like two neighbors living in our uh, with our backyards fenced in. And we often stand at our spouse's, the fence between our spouse's yard and our own, pointing at all the things they need to change. But the whole time we're doing that, our back is turned to our own backyard and we can't see what's all the weeds and everything growing there that are creating havoc in the neighborhood as well. So when we can get away from the fence and get planted in our own backyard, focusing on our part in this neighborhood of this marriage, then the marriage becomes a whole lot be more beautiful. So, well, yeah, so- We use it a lot. We use the backyard. <laughs> yeah, it's great Picture for kids too. Kids yeah. can understand it as well because, um, you know, by nature, it starts as little as you start have your first conflict with your sibling. You want to point out what they're doing that they shouldn't have done rather than looking at what I did that is create is contributing to what's happening. So- so as we, I appreciate what you guys are sharing and just, um, you know, the difference that it's making for you. I think earlier you really shared some of the difference it's making for you in your day-to-day -day life. It doesn't mean fighting has gone away. It doesn't mean conflict has gone away. It just means you're more willing to press into it and grow through it. Is there anything else you would describe that you feel it's changed for you on a day-to-day -day basis? For me, it has me thinking holistically about life and just in general, like this growth mindset around everything. And I, I know what growth mindset is. I've, I've learned it and I've been trained on it. And, but 
you got us, you helped us get to another layer, at least for me, I think you would say the same. But so now I I almost find myself thinking on a different level day to day. So even parenting for me, I feel like it's improved that. It's not perfect, but the, you know, certainly the way I talk to the kids or hey, I'm gonna show up for this practice because it's the best thing for me to do and get off my phone, whatever it is. So I, I just think overall day to day it's helped us. I think you'd say the same. Absolutely. Just think bigger. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Like that. I mean, change is hard. We're complex humans, right? So like we get, we're creatures of habit and you get used to certain things. So it's just. Change is really hard for me. And like what he said, every day when I, when I do something, then questioning, like, why did I do that? Or why am I thinking this? Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I, I think I'm sabotaging something. And then I'll like. (laughs) <laughs> like then when he said it I was like wait a minute I can think that but I do not need you saying that I might be sabotaging something <laughs> I, I, I put it in the form of a question could you be sabotaging versus I was like oh <laughs> get out of my you backyard did, John you did do that <laughs> <laughs> oh. did do that <laughs> yeah, so it just sounds like a lot bigger thinking, a lot more uh, paying attention more closely to your impact yeah. in your life and in the choices you're making. It's really powerful. Well, and I think too, it's. I think it's in the daily moments. So we came home, and she mentioned it at the retreat. It's about legacy and generational impact. I, I, my parents got divorced when I was younger and beautiful people. And they just, they didn't, I don't think ever went through any of this type of work. So to have the opportunity to invest in us, invest in our kids and then show them like that we're working on stuff, I think shows them as they get older, then they're, you know, hopefully have the mindset where they're going to invest in their relationship. So I don't think it's just impacting us or our kids. It's our grandkids and, their grandkids and it's like the generational generational impact of all this type of work. Yeah. I don't think you can underestimate it. And just the sensitivity of children too. They have this sense. They know they're not dummies, you know, (laughs) if, if there's a tension between us and taking responsibility for that, um, I I think it plays a huge role in the peace of a house, Mm. you know, the inner peace and just the calm in house. And um, Mm. so I think the impact is unending. Actually, everywhere I go, this sounds maybe weird and I'm not judging people at all, but I'm like, everyone, like I'll be in a store and I'm like, just noticing things. And I'm like, they could really use some of this deep work. Like I think <laughs> everyone, everyone can use this. Mm. Even if you, even if you like, were telling yourself the story that everything's fine, I'm fine, because I definitely was telling myself the story like everything's fine, I'm fine. But then my actions were totally doing something different. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think how many people out there? I mean, we live in a whole world where like we're always supposed to look like we everything's fine over here. We're we're living our best life and we're all together and we're always happy and our kids are always fabulous. <laughs> and, you know, that's a lot to carry for everyone. And it's just, there's so many people that I think could peel back the layers and find freedom. Cause it does feel free. It feels yeah. so free. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's really just beginning to understand and explore our own humanness, our own thoughts, our own feelings, our own beliefs, and what impact are they making on the people that we love? And that's every human in the world is making an impact and longs to be loved deeply. And we don't understand how our impact blocks the very love that we long for. And so it is, for me, it's the most life-changing um awareness I've ever gained and has created the deepest, deeper relationships than I ever thought were possible. So it is, it is empowering. And, um, I love it. Well, thank you, Julia, for answering the call on your life, because I mean, 
I would sit there at Breakthrough and I was in awe, in, in absolute awe. And I know I didn't say anything for a few days, but the way that you could ask questions that would help people, you could see people thinking and like realizing and understanding things about themselves as you ask questions. And then what it led to in these watching breakthroughs because of your questioning, I, I, it was, for lack of a better word, magical. Like I, I that is your calling. Yeah. It was pretty amazing. I, I'm telling you, I've been to a lot of trainings. A lot. It's, it's <laughs> your work's the most powerful work I've ever seen. It is the, wow. the, the yes, couples, but personal development, which obviously yeah. helps the couple. Like it was incredible. So. Well, We're, thank we are evangelizing you. you and telling everybody about you. For sure. <laughs> yes, well, I love enough. it. And it is, it's the work of these tools of just learning to be with myself and focus on what, who I'm committed to be and the impact that I'm making through my life. And it's literally, um, it's amazing the ripple effect when you stand authentically in who you are and show up. It's amazing what can happen. So Thank you guys so much for coming on and sharing your story. Uh, I wonder if if you guys had a situation where you had to pick between a trip to the beach. Life is busy. You're like, I just need a cocktail in hand and the waves <laughs> crashing on my feet. And you had a choice to do that or invest in breakthrough. What would you choose? Break your hands down. Yeah, because it will it will make all of your other together times so much more valuable yeah yeah no question Hands, yeah no That's question the greatest investment you can make absolutely i absolutely. mean we're we're going again and we this work is we believe in it yeah it's i mean it's never ending right so it's yes yeah. and that's the cool part as soon as you up level a little bit you're hungry for more right yeah and that will make all the future beach times that much more enjoyable so much better. <laughs> multiplier effect, right? Yes, exactly. Well, thank you guys. I think so many people watching will resonate with so many different little things you guys have said. And I just appreciate your openness and your willingness to share and be here with us, be here with me today. So thank you. Thank so you, Julia. Thank Thanks you so much. Us.